Hello and welcome to another week's edition, another fine weeks. We had cross stitch winning last Wednesday, which is a good win. Good win for the in the stewards room, admittedly, but it was too. Yeah, um, which went great connections and looks like a very promising filly in the making, Joe. Absolutely. And then into Saturday, wasn't Antonio Giuseppe impressive? He was he was he was? I said to Tony Milo, he needed to win by at least two lengths and needed to be impressive to press on towards the Metro. Run them after the race from Melbourne and said only just won by 2.3 lengths, but he was keen to run and right he should too because uh, equal favour in the Metropolitan this week. Absolutely. Mm. And then we have Valadero. Valadero, yeah, good, good win, win for Rory. It certainly was three three in a row for Valadero. Yeah. And um, starting from a Hawkesbury maiden midweek at Warwick Farm through to a Group Three gloaming stakes, pretty big effort. And uh, he gives himself a chance to be running for Group 1 status in two weeks' time in the Spring Champion Stakes. Yeah, wonderful. Anyway, we'll move straight on to Mooney Valley Which Friday night. We've got a very busy weekend ahead. We've just got one in the last, Sir Bacchus. Galloped there on Monday. Got around the track okay. Craig Williams was aboard. He was happy enough with the work. Um, his racing style is probably not the best for the Valley, but it does give us a chance to be racing him in his own grade instead of going up to Group 3 level, which we would like to get to later in the prep. Um, he's drawn well, but if he uh, jumps, settles midfield, be very hard to beat Charles. Okay, then Caulfield on Saturday. Yes. He's got Champagne ready in the first. She um, ran second at Mooney Valley last Friday night. It was a good run. She'd appreciate extra distance. This is a step up, however, from a 1,200 to a mile. Might be a bit, a bit quick, but um, she's fit. She is fit. I think she is a miler. It's just a matter of whether it's the right thing to do or not. But in saying that, she did win her maiden over what? 14. 14 or 13? 14. 1400. 14, so it's a little bit topsy turvy the way to do things. But in racing, it's not always how you do it, it's as long as you've got the horse to do it. Absolutely. And she's certainly got a bit of Very smart for me. And we've just got one other there that day, and that is Gretna, yeah, the unlucky Gretna. Very unlucky. She just needs a bit of bit of luck and a, a kill, so to speak. So hopefully um, she can get that on Saturday at Caulfield. Drawn well, and um, it's a nice race for a game. She's racing in a grade, and I'd say she'll start a pretty short price favourite. Absolutely. hope so, anyway. Righto, straight into Ramwick, we've got Madame Moustache. Hey, what about you, hey? What? Having a two rod running already. Yeah. First race of the year. Yeah, first race of the day, too. Mm. She's in she's barrier one, too. Yeah. The first two year old in the barriers. There <laughs> you go, Chrissy. She's got there herself, Charles. Simple as that. There's been no pressure put on her. She's a lovely filly that's um, got a bright future. She's ready to go. She's had two trials. Both have been very impressive to my eye. And she's pulled up well after her most recent trial last Friday. Had a little breeze up the straight this morning, Wednesday morning. And you give her the all clear. Yeah. You happy? Absolutely. Good. Well, she'll run good well. barrier, good jockey, good horse. Very hard to beat. There we go. Good start of the day. Wouldn't it, it would, wouldn't it? Just get you right. off your toes. <laughs> exactly. I'm already on them. Straight into the Craven Plate Group 3. We've got Spirit Jim. He was good last start. Good through the line, wasn't he? Mm. It seems to be the new saying, through the line. Um, doesn't pay the bills, but at least he was strong through the line. So, um, <laughs> gate four, should get a nice run with Huey in the saddle. It's not an overly strong race. I guess it's somewhat be the one to beat. Be good speed there with High World in it, you would think. You would have thought of <laughs> the way he set the tempo last week. So, um, he's a chance to find some Australian form. Then in, into the dulcify, we've got Earth breaking through for his maiden last start. Yes. Big step up to it on Saturday. No, it's not. Because it's a benchmark 66 race. Terrible um, race, really, isn't it? To have the high, it's a handicap, so you've got a horse coming out of maidens that are carrying second to the top weight. You've got maidens on the bottom weight. They're throwing and considering. Um, it's a group, well, listed, listed race, race so, on, look, on a group one day. Our two horses, Earth and Octavian Augustus, are both listed class horses in my opinion anyway, so they're going to get their chance straight away on Saturday. 
Um, Earth's drawn gate 10. Need a bit of luck from there. Octavian Augustus. Just go up. back in her, wouldn't he? Earth does? I think. Probably. And Octavian Augustus, well, he's going to get the rail race with Craig Williams in the saddle, gate 1. His run was good first up. It was a soft 5 track, but it was racing worse than that. And uh, I think on a good track, a mile. Love it, won't he? He's a good horse, this horse. Good horse. He worked well yesterday. Proper horse, Charlie. Proper horse. He worked well yesterday. Right now, into the Roman console, we've got Nikitas. Now, this is a good field. This is a great field. Okay. We're up against it here. Our boy needs to find some form. We've dropped him back from 1400 to 12 because I thought his run in the Golden Rose was fair. But, to be fair to the horse, he hasn't had much luck, has he? No. Yeah. So... Good gate, Barrack 5 on Saturday, let's hope he's a bit of luck in his, in his corner. He'll be there stalking them, ready to pounce late. Okay. Then into the flight stakes. Yes. Oh my sword. Very good. talk horse. Yes, she is. Very good chance, Charles. She ran super in the Golden Rose, running second. As did the top weight Yankee Rose, who she's up against on Saturday. Or the number one horse. Um... Look, I may sort, big strong filly, bred perfectly. Um, she's just got to take that step up to Ramwick Mile. It's not as easy as everyone thinks. Um, she just does things a little bit keen in her races. Let's hope Huey can get those little chinks out of her armour on Saturday because she's a super horse. She got it one last Saturday. She did, Charles. She did. Right, in the same race we've got Suzanne, James McDonald, Barrier 6. Very underestimated filly this, Charlie. Um, she was extremely unlucky not to have won last start. Um, the stable mate Fox Play beat her. She's going to come on a lot thanks to that run. That was her first run at that level. And she, she was, her run was... She would have learned a lot too, a lot being a bit of largey bargey. James McDonald rides Barrier 6 in a field of 8. Gee, I like her chances. What about she's Awoke? A horse. Awoke, she's worked as well as any of them, if not better. She was extremely unlucky last start after... Behind her all the horses. Yes. Um, she's a filly that looks like she'll get beyond a mile, but I still think she's got a great chance. Barrier four, Brendan's going to give her a nice ride on a good track, which is what she's looking for. We are very well represented in this race, Charles. Very well. Trifecta. We'll start with one and we'll get away <laughs> from there. Okay, then into the Epsom Handicap. Group one. Million dollars. Whoa. Macintosh. Barrier two. Couldn't have been any more impressive winning the Theo Marks first up. Tom Berry rides at 52 kilos. He is a terrific chance. Um... He's a good horse, this. Take his run out on the Queens of Derby, and his form's impeccable. Yeah, uh, he's is. come back well as a four-year-old. Four-year-olds have a great record in the race, and he'll fly the flag strongly for the stable. And McCreary, with just half a kilo less, and Kieran McAvoy. He couldn't have been any more impressive as last no, week. couldn't have been. Absolutely bolted it. Gate four, Kieran, another not lightweight rider. What we've done in this race is we've purposely targeted lightweight riders that can ride comfortably at the weight. It's a big thing, isn't it? Fatigue, um, dehydration, strength. Strength, it's a massive thing in modern day sport. Um, and I think we've done very well with our riders. So McCreary, he's dropping back from 2,000 metres. He did win a miles before that. He was a touch keen. But you've got to remember the mile at Ramwick's a tough Had mile. Had the blinks on there that day, didn't he? He did win in one at Hawkesbury and then off at Rose Hill over the 2000. And then we've stayed off again on Saturday. He'll be in the finish, Charles. He'll be in the finish. <laughs> he will. Then we've got Van oh, with half a kilo less again. All The key to this race, Charles, all four of them, in fact, three of them, McCreary, no. But the other three have all been set for the race. So, Vanbrugh's been kept sharp to keep him fresh for the mile third up. 
Torgerson, the Reds has always been a race as a lightweight chance. He didn't win last start in the Bill Ritchie, but his run was as good as a win. And obviously at the top there, McIntosh, well, he was set after the Queens and Derby for the race. So the beauty of Vambra, he's, he's a Group 1 winning colt, as you said, in your famous barrier draw yesterday, or Tuesday. You're dead right. He's a Group 1 winning colt with 51 kilos. He's going to be hard to beat. Okay, and we've already touched on Torgerson. Yeah, well, not much more to say. Catherine O'Hara rides. And, Kathleen. Um, Kathleen, is it? Yeah. Okay, well, you would know. <laughs> so um, she's ridden a couple of Group 1 winners in the past couple of seasons and no stranger to Sydney racing and mixes mixes it with the best in the world every week, you could say. And um, Gate 5, we've drawn very well on all of these runners in this race. Well done, Charles. Thanks. Charles put his hand in the barrier. Draw. Next time I'll take a glove. Yes. Well done, Charles. Right, uh, into, straight into the mat drop. Group one. Who shot the ball on? Top weight at 57. Yes, not a bad top weight. Um, it is six kilos more than the horses on the limit. That, from a horse, from a perspective of who shot the ball, he's got to be careful of those horses down on the limit. Um, he's a class horse. He showed last start. He's edging his way back into form. This is his right distance. There's a talk a bit of rain on Thursday. I think that'll hang around until say Friday morning. Get a soft five, soft six track. It'll be up right up. Who shot the barman's alley? Absolutely. He's going terrific. Storm the stars. Storm the stars. He's as good as these, if not better than these. Um, his English form, if he brought it to the races, would be superior. In fact. So, it's easy extra to distance. talk, he's got to do it. Uh, extra distance will suit. Good draw. Brenton have done otherwise, I think he'll suit him. Yep. And um, it's up to him now. And um, Grand Marshal, Barrier 1. Touch disappointing last start, Charles, but he's up to 2400 and there was no reason for a poor performance last start. Probably more tempo related. 2400 in a genuine Group 1 race. He never lets us down. No, he certainly he'll, doesn't. He'll fight like a tiger. Drawn Barry one, Craig Williams aboard. And Janu. Janu, he's Isn't going he terrific. Well. Nine year old, last start, he went terrific running second. Prior to that he ran third behind Sacred Master, giving him weight. Sacred Master's an equal favourite. This time they're racing basically at the same weight, so worked that one out. Janu's a genuine chance if the, if the favourite Sacred yeah. Master. And right Mate, so. he, he hasn't give, been giving horses weight to, for years. Nope. Unorthodox preparation, but hey, happy horses do great things, and that's what we hope Janub is on Saturday. And Secret Master, Newcastle Cup winner. He sure is, Charles. Right Again, been set for the race. He's peaking at the right time. It was good to see him in winning form on a better track last start. He'll love the pressure of a 2,400-metre race. He's been placed in... Auckland Cup over two miles at Group 1 level. This is his race, Charles. He's he's ready to go. And Antonio, finally, e favourite. Equal favourite with Sacred Master. Good gate, gate five. Glenn Boss booked to ride. There's no more confident rider in a Group 1 race than Glenn Boss. That's exactly what you need on these big days. Um, she's going to get a lovely run from gate five. It'll be hard to beat. Okay. Big step up and great, though. Big it is huge, huge. Huge, because what should he, he should actually be carrying about well, 10 kilos. Right? I'll tell you something. Who shot the bar and Storm the Stars, Grand Marshal, Janub, Sacred Master would have all won by two lengths last week as well. So yep. he's racing against the big boys. What I'm hoping is he can improve over the 2400 metres. That's the big key. Absolutely. Righto, into the last we have Amavatio. Barrier 15. Yeah, resuming for a new prep, it's not his race, but he needs to start somewhere. He'll head down to Melbourne and start running over 1400 after that. And good project. Jesus also has come back good. Tried super the other day, didn't he? His road has been good, he looks well, he's working with purpose. Forget his last preparation. Well, Bear, I think the seventh might have been in the Doncaster, was it? I think it was. It could have been. And um, he's come back good, Charlie. He's a good horse. I reckon he went missing last prep. He'd still run seventh in the Doncaster. He's come back better. Okay, then straight into Sunday. We've got Winebush. First emergency in the UCI 1800. Um, 
frustrating, but a lot of a lot of horses have been with the Sydney weather and the way the tracks have raced because of that wet weather we've had. So we sent to Melbourne for a better track, 1800 metres, which will suit. No excuses. He's got a good draw. Cubanian rides. It's not an overly strong race, Charlie. No. I think he can do it if he gets in. Yeah, it's it's a big turnaround, but if he can stay, he's a definite chance. Okay, then into the tumble. Preferment looking to do it again. He is. Needs to improve a touch. You could say his first, the second up run was a touch one pace. Um, but I'm not too concerned about that. He'll appreciate getting back to Flemington. He loves the 2,000 metres down there. Huey aboard, barrier five. I wouldn't say it's an overly strong race. He got well, obviously hard. Hart, no? He's he's going terrific, and he is the one to beat. But outside of Hartnell, who can mix his form in, in, in Melbourne, um, you've got some promising horses, but more stayers, aren't they? Maybe Jamaica. Jamaica is got is, is, is a spirit race. horse, but look, Jamaica's won one race in the last six or seven starts. It's like Hartnell's a proper horse, but. Yeah, I think We're not scared anyway. Nah, put it that way. Right, uh, and then into the Blazer Stakes, we've got French Emotion, Ben Mellon, Barrier 16. Bad draw. Needs going to have a guns and aft. Need a lot of luck from there. Um, don't know whether we'll go forward or back, but we need to try something. She's racing all right. Just got narrowly beaten last start. Prior to that, she ran beaten about a length and a half in a race similar to this, so she's up to them, just needs a touch of luck on her side. Jeez, we'll have a lovely weekend of sport because there's some phenomenal racing out there. And a couple of games of footy as well. Yeah, never mind that. Go the Swans. <laughs>